Most people with an interest in folklore know about the Sheila Na gig, the grotesque female medieval church carvings with her proudly displayed exaggerated privates. While they're a fascinating subject on their own, today we'll be talking about a lesser known and far more singular subject, Sheila Na Skeen. This tale was first collected by Lady Wilde in 1888 in the area around County Cork, Ireland, and goes something like this. There exists an abandoned, ruined old farmstead that no one will take on or dare to rebuild, for it has an evil reputation. Many years before, and no one remembers exactly how many, a rich old farmer lived there alone, except for his housekeeper, a woman named Sheila. She had a reputation for being strong-willed, fierce, and vindictive. The farmer's wife had passed long before, and his only son lived far away. The old farmer was rumored to sleep with his gold at night, it was even said he could not sleep unless a bag of gold was nestled under his pillow. This, of course, was common knowledge to the housekeeper. One night, she coerced her weak-willed boyfriend to aid in her scheme to get the gold for herself. The story goes that, when Sheila chose her time to strike, she crept into the farmer's bedroom as he slept. She took a short sword, or long knife, accounts differ, that hung on the wall near his bed and used the blade on the old man viciously and repeatedly until he stopped breathing. Then she and her cowering boyfriend rifled through the room. They collected all the gold they could find, which since Sheila knew his hiding places was quite a bit and spirited it away. While it was a dastardly and heinous crime, it was definitely not a clever one. Of course, suspicion immediately fell on Sheila as the most likely suspect. Sheila and her boyfriend were both arrested and interrogated, and it wasn't long before the truth came out. The pair was tried for their crimes and convicted. However, even though the boyfriend was too terrified of Sheila to give evidence against her, the officials realized he was the least culpable of the two. Sheila's sentence was to hang, and the boyfriend was sentenced to prison. One loose end was while Sheila and her accomplice were quickly caught, the stolen gold wasn't with them. Sheila offered to show the authorities where the loot was hidden in exchange for a pardon, but the severity of the crime made that offer unacceptable. Sheila Naskeen, meaning Sheila of the Knife, as she was now known, was executed on schedule. That left only the boyfriend among the living who knew where the gold was hidden. Unfortunately, as soon as his own sentence was pronounced, he had some sort of fit and collapsed, from which he never quite recovered. He died in prison without telling anyone where the gold was. The old farmer's son had immediately returned to the family farm once he heard what happened to his father. He then took over running the farm aided by his own two sons. They made sporadic attempts to find the missing gold, but had no luck. Years passed, and the farmer grew older while his two sons reached manhood. Matters might well have remained as they were for generations, except for three nights running the farmer had the same strange dream. In the dream, a voice told him to go to a ruined castle in the neighborhood at night alone, and he would receive some information about where to find his family's lost gold. On the third night, perhaps believing that his father's ghost was instructing him, he resolved to do as the dream directed. His sons, of course, wanted to go with him once they learned his intent, but the farmer was determined to obey the dream's instructions to the letter. He went alone, and his sons anxiously awaited their father's return. Their father did come home later that night, but he was pale, tired, and weak. He clearly had suffered some terrifying trauma. His sons cared for him and put him to bed to rest. When he had somewhat recovered, he told them what had happened at the castle. The farmer said no sooner had he entered the old castle ruins and put his back against a wall, there was a breeze across his face carrying these words, spoken by someone he could not see. If you want to find the gold, look behind the third stone. <coughs> it was at that very moment that the ghost of Sheila Naskeen appeared, horrid, gigantic, and terrible. Her eyes were red, and her shrieks were deafening as she charged him. Her hands dripped with blood as she waved the fateful knife above her head. There was nothing the farmer could do but flee for his life. He thought the horrible apparition would catch him for sure, but when he passed the boundary of the old castle, she wailed and disappeared into the ground. So he reached his home safely, but nearly frightened out of his wits. Worse, the ghost had interrupted before whoever was speaking to him could tell the farmer which third stone it had meant. Yet the farmer, now that he had time to recover, remembered something his instincts told him about the direction the voice intended about the third stone. The farmer's own voice strengthened, and he said, I am quite sure the intended third stone the voice meant was 
Before he could finish, again the dreadful ghost of Sheila Naskeen appeared, as gigantic as before and, as Lady Wilde described, with fire circling her head. At once all the candles in the bedroom were extinguished and the farmer was snatched out of his bed and thrown hard to the floor. His brave sons held their ground but could not find their father in the dark even though they could hear his groans of pain. When they finally got the candles relit, they found their father already dead on the floor with a black circle around his neck, as if he'd been choked to death. And so Sheila Naskeen claimed her second victim, even though the spiteful murderer's body still lay in the cold ground. After their father's affairs were settled, the two brothers, despite everything that had happened or perhaps because of it, were determined to reclaim the treasure and their father and grandfather's rightful legacy. They armed themselves with tools for digging and clubs for defense, and went right back to the ruined castle. Night fell while they were still checking every third stone up as far as they could reach, but were having absolutely no luck in finding the right one. The brothers were close to giving up for the night when a sliver of blue light crept out of the wall and the ghost of their father appeared. As they watched, the ghost pointed toward a place they had not yet searched. As before, in that instant the ghastly powerful ghost of Sheila Naskeen appeared and attacked their father's ghost in an attempt to thwart his effort to show his sons the right stone. There were horrid shrieks and screams as the two ghosts fought each other across the castle ruins. Seizing the chance their father had given them, the two brothers ran to where he had pointed and quickly found and lifted the right stone. Behind it was a sack of gold coins almost too heavy to carry, but together the brothers managed. Yet, as they hurried out of the castle, they heard the wail of Sheila Naskeen close behind them. As frightened as they were, they knew now what to do and ran for the boundary of the castle as fast as they could go, beating the vengeful ghost by little more than a whisker. Finally beaten, Sheila Naskeen screamed her despair and then disappeared into the ground again and was not seen from that day forward. Even so, on dark nights the brothers could still hear whispers and moans around their farm. Determined to put an end to that chapter of their lives, the brothers had the old house pulled down and used some of the gold to build fine new homes for each of them elsewhere. The brothers' families prospered from that day forward, yet from that time to many years later, the sight of Sheila Naskeen's murders remained a place of tainted shadows and dark unease. Perhaps it does to this very day.